I bought a harmonica a few weeks ago. Nice. I play that. Nice. I'll get. I'll come backstage at the uh, Capitol Theater and play for Blues uh, Traveler and Spin Doctors. He loves when people do that. Does he? Yeah. Yeah. Blues Traveler and Spin Doctors Capitol Theater. October thirteenth. Yeah. We were there. We had an amazing day in Portchester. You gotta check out. Take the train up there. And we're gonna do a band segue like we did back in the yes. day. I want to talk about this. The band's at Blues Traveler. You grew up with John Popper. He's a high school friend of yours. Well, growing up. I'm not sure either of us ever grew up. Yeah. It's a matter of opinion. But yeah, we, we went to the same high school together. Which is Isn't it insane? Like, two guys in high school become two of the biggest bands of the 90s. We had an amazing music program. Music in schools. It's important. Music. High school. Princeton High School. Princeton High, and um, we had amazing English teachers. That's why I'm, you know, a lyricist now, and you know, education now. Yeah. And the music program. So you saw, so you knew John Popper, like skinny John Popper as a kid. <laughs> yeah, he was really skinny back then. No? <laughs> <laughs> he was just a little wisp of the thing. You saw the evolution. I was so lucky that I got to go to high school with John because how many people in their lifetime are like 15 years old and they meet somebody who's like, he's a year old, he's 16 years old, and you're like, that motherfucker is a star. Like I knew, part of my French, but that was the kind of reaction. Everybody in my high school just knew this dude was going straight to the top. Yeah, I, can I tell a story? Yeah, please. All right, so, so John, runs, John runs for uh, um, like junior class vice president or something like that. <laughs> like it's totally a lark, right? Uh, I might have been. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, talking, we're, we're talking about we're talking about John Popper. Right? <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's not asinine at all. I suppose for some high school, it's a big deal. It's fine, yeah. <laughs> well, it would have been a big deal if John. Well, let me let me tell you what happened. Sorry, it ended up being kind of a big deal. So, of course, I'm like the outsider guy who thinks this kind of stuff is bullshit. But I'm in the I'm in the gym where all the things are happening. The speeches, and I'm standing next to the bleachers because I'm too cool to be on the bleachers, right? Yeah. Um, John comes out, and they had this like podium thing with the funky, like that crazy goosenecky yeah. like stand thing on it, the, you know, a mic on it. John comes out, and he used to wear like this camo vest back then. And he had this funky band, the leader that his harmonicas were in, and he wore like a kind of like a Panama slash fedora hat. He was a Character and he always wore sunglasses. He was like a you know in high school he was like that. Yeah, oh yeah, and he was six foot four and you know three hundred pounds or something like that. You know, it was huge. So he cut like a, a real figure. And he and I were good friends. And um, which is another funny story how we became friends. But anyway, he he gets up on the podium. He looks out at the crowd. He takes the mic out of the mic stand. Pulls out a mic and just started wailing, wailing. It was crazy, it was playing the blues, this reeling crazy riff, you know? And instantaneously, black kids, white kids, yellow kids, purple kids, substitute teachers, purple kids. They turn purple when he started playing the harmonica. They burst out of their seats, and I'm standing next to the bleachers, you remember, right? And the bleachers are undulating. Like, you can see, you know those ones that pull out from the wall? It was like that kind of, you're like, these are going to collapse. <laughs> this was the day that they were going to collapse. Right there. And they were just like, all this, the vice principal came out and took the mic away. And they suspended him for five days. And he was like the hero. <laughs> yeah. So that was his speech to People are still talking about it. That was his speech for a class. That was his speech. And they were like, then they were like, you nuts on speech, you can't run for about five days. <laughs> <laughs> Princeton, New Jersey was real uptight. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, and I, I, I was quoting the Princeton packet as saying, hold your applause for just one second. <laughs> and, um, they were like, when I was still young and rebellious, they were like, so, you know, tell us, you know, what do you think of Princeton now that you've grown up? And I was like, the whole town could burn down as long as Hoagie gave them this year. It's a good Hoagie shop. It's a nice town. Princeton's a nice town. <laughs> I regret saying that. Yeah. Um, <laughs>